Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Gorn on X, and today we're going to be reading chapter 2 of G.A. Villain's fanfic, Chasing a Dream. So, let's begin. Chapter 2. Magic, Iron, and Rainbows. The g g god of thunder? Jim asked in surprise. Yes, Thor answered. Now, might I have your name? I'm Jim he said. Jim Hawkins. Well, kin of Hawk, Thor began. Those goblins have been lurking about in the space around Asgard. We've repelled them when they try to attack the Eternal City, yet still they remain. When Heimdall's gaze saw your ship being attacked by those creatures, I volunteered to lend you my aid. Unfortunately, I was too late. Wait, Jim began. You said that none of the crew survived, but what about Ben? What? Thor asked, puzzled. Ben, Jim repeated. A friend of mine. He's a robot. I think I know what you are referring to, Thor replied. Thor led Jim down to the main area of the ship. On the deck was the shattered remains of Ben. Tears welled in Jim's eyes, but he quickly bit back to avoid crying in front of Thor. Can you repair your metal friend? Thor inquired. Jim shook his head heavily. No, Jim answered with a sigh. The technology used to build him was ancient. It would take weeks for me to learn the technology, and rebuilding him would be a long and painful process. And I don't have the time. I have to help another friend, and it's a matter of grave importance. I think I know a man that can repair your metal friend, Thor explained after a few seconds of silence. He may only be a mortal, but he is swift in learning and skilled in building and inventing. At this point, I'm willing to try anything, Jim stated. Thor nodded. I shall take you back with me to Asgard. We shall tend to your wounds and then I will take you to my friend to rebuild your robot. Thank you, Jim responded. I really can't thank you enough for everything that you've done me. You are most welcome, Kin of Hawk, Thor said with a grin. Also, I found this odd creature hiding amongst the rope. Does it belong to you? Thor held out his hands to reveal a very frightened blob of pink hunkered down in the Thunder God's hand. Morph! Jim explained, having completely forgotten about the creature until now. Hearing its name, the pink bog looked up to see Jim standing in front of him. Morph immediately flew out of Thor's hands and up to Jim. The pink blob rubbed up against Jim's face and took a seat on Jim's shoulder. With Morph backed and the prospect of rebuilding Jim, things weren't looking so dismal anymore. Jim and Thor rounded up the pieces of Ben in the burlap sack that they found below desk and Thor carried Jim and Morph with him down to Asgard. Flying over the city was a breathtaking experience. The architecture of Asgard was incredible. The city was certainly fit for gods. Out in the distance, Jim could see several Asgardians working on a large metal sphere at the end of a multicolored glass like bridge. Thor landed on a walkway leading up to the tallest building, which Jim assumed to be the palace. A blonde woman sporting an all-green attire stood in front of them. Thor! The woman shouted as she ran forward to embrace Thor, which he returned half-heartedly. I was so worried about you. You needn't worry, Thor replied. Those creatures are nothing to be concerned about. Nothing to be concerned about? Jim asked in disbelief. I apologize, Kin of Hawk, Thor said upon realizing that what he said might have been insensitive to Jim. I did not mean to speak ill of your fallen comrades. Aren't you going to introduce me to your friend? The woman injected. Ah, yes, forgive my rudeness, Thor said. Jim, this is my friend, Amora the Enchantress. Amora, this is Jim, Kin of Hawk. He was injured by the goblin attacks. Could your magic heal him? My magic is unmatched in all of the Nine Realms. 
Amora said arrogantly. She waved her hands. A light green light began to radiate from Jim's body. The scratch on his arms faded away, as did the gnash on his forehead. When the light faded, the soreness that had crippled his body was gone. In fact, Jim felt fantastic. Better than he had ever felt before. Wow, thank you, Jim said. I feel amazing. Of course you do, Amora stated. My magic healed your body of all physical injuries. Is it not impressive, For I doubt even Loki could manage such a spell. Thor's jolly demeanor seemed to harden at the mention of Loki, whomever that may be. I do not know, Amora, Thor sighed. Loki has always been the more competent sorcerer betwixt the two of you. At that comment, Amora's face flashed with anger. You have too much faith in your brother, Thor, Amora sneered. He is not as powerful as you might think. With that statement, Amora whirled around and walked away. Who is Thor? Jim asked after Amora had left. My brother, Thor answered. Not by blood, however. He was a frost giant that my father took under his wing and raised as his own. We were raised alongside each other, but our lives took very different paths. He went down a very dark path. He tried to enslave all of Midgard. Now he is imprisoned in a dungeon of the castle, awaiting judgment from my father for a suitable punishment for his sins. There was a long pause as Thor bit back tear in his eyes. I just want my brother back, he sighed. I'm sorry, Jim replied, regretting having brought up the subject and hoping to change it to a more light-hearted conversation. So you and Amora, she seems like she really likes you. Are you two a couple? Thor chuckled, his jolly mood returned. No, we are not, though I do not doubt that Amora wishes that we were, Thor said. However, my heart belongs to another. She is a woman on Midgard named Jane Foster. I have not seen her in a long while. The last time I visited Midgard, I was too preoccupied with Thor to visit her. But when I take you to see my friend, I shall pay her a visit as well. What is this Midgard place that you keep talking about? Jim asked. Midgard is another world, Thor stated. Amora angrily strolled into her chambers. The blonde sorceress looked at her reflection in the mirror on her vanity. She fired a blast of her green magic at it in frustration, shattering it into thousands of pieces. You're angry, a female voice spoke up. Magnificent. Anger is an exquisite vessel for dark magic. It will allow you to grow even stronger. What does it matter? Amora spat, turning to face the woman. Despite all of the power that you taught me, despite everything that I do, Thor's mind and heart are always elsewhere. Every step that I take is a mistake in his eyes. He'll never truly be mine. Love is weakness, Amora, the woman replied. Power is the only thing that can truly supplement the soul. I just don't know what to do, Amora sighed. What is this uncertainty? the woman asked in disgust. Where is the promising young woman who I gave the secrets of dark arts to? Perhaps I should have chosen Loki as my acolyte in this world instead. Perhaps you should! Amora shouted back at the woman. I want to be myself. I don't want to be you! Amora sat down on the end of an ornate couch and dropped her face into the palm of her hands. The other woman's cold green hands rested upon Amora's shoulder, sending a chill through her body. I apologize, Amora, the woman said in a tone far less harsh than the one she had used before. I did not mean to further upset you. Thor shall be yours in due time. All that we must do is to see that this world falls to our command. After that, he will be your pet to do with what you please. 
Thank you, Maleficent. Your words come as a great comfort. If this Midgard place is another world, Jim began, why don't we just take my ship there? Thor dismounted his horse a few yards away from the large metal sphere that Jim had spotted in the distance earlier. Jim did the same. Midgard is dimensions away, Thor explained. It would take weeks to sail there by boat. Traveling by the Bifrost is much more expedient. The Bifrost? Jim asked. It is a device created by my people, Thor explained. It is known to some as the Rainbow Bridge. It fires a blast of concentrated energy, creating a wormhole that can transport the user to any of the nine realms connecting to the Yidrazel, the Tree of Life. Though my people have since learned that there are other worlds in the multiverse that the Bifrost does not connect to, the Shitari world for instance, and presumably your world as well. However, the Bifrost can be quite destructive. If left on for too long, it will tear a world apart. I had to destroy it over a year ago in order to save Jotunheim. Why didn't you just turn off the Bifrost? Jim questioned. Thor looked down at the question. It was another of Loki's sins, Thor stated. Loki used magic to prevent the Bifrost from closing. He wanted to destroy Jotunheim. Because somewhere in his unsound mind, he believed that doing so would earn our father's praise. Jim mentally slapped himself for bringing up something about Loki around Thor again. He could tell that it was a sensitive area, and he really didn't want to poke at it. From everything that Jim had heard, Loki sounded like a real nut job, and he secretly hoped that he would never have to find out just how crazy this man was. So you destroyed this thing? Jim said. But you've obviously rebuilt it. Yes, Thor nodded. It has taken some time, but the Asgardian scholars were able to repair it using the power of the Tesseract, a powerful cosmic cube that acts as a gateway to the other side of the universe. Bifrost, Jotunheim, Tesseract? Jim wondered how any of the Asgardians could keep track of all these bizarrely named objects. Thor led Jim past the dark-skinned man with ember eyes and golden armor that acted as the gatekeeper of the Bifrost. This man, apparently named Heimdall, activated the large mechanical device with his sword. Lightning surged around the dome, creating the image of a large tree. The metal sides of the dome appeared to be spinning fiercely. Worf hunked down on Jim's shoulder, afraid of what was transpiring. At the side of the dome was a large swirl of rainbow-colored light spinning faster and faster with each second. Brace yourself, Thor said with a chuckle. Immediately after, Jim felt as though he was yanked forward and shot from a large cannon. Rainbow-colored lights swirled around him, making Jim feel more and more dizzy. However, only a second later, he and Thor were standing firmly on solid ground. Jim's head continued to spin violently as he collapsed on the ground, unable to stand up straight. Morph melted into a puddle on the ground with a long, drawn-out sigh. Jim fought back the urge to vomit and took several deep breaths. Thor chuckled. You never forget your first time on the Bifrost, Thor stated. Jim shot him a dirty look, or at least he attempted to, but he wasn't sure if it came off that way with the entire world spinning around him. As the motion sickness began to wear off and Jim stood up, he saw that they were on the rooftop of some kind of skyscraper. Looking around him, he could see that they were in the middle of a huge urban area. The surrounding area was all under heavy construction. It looked like a natural disaster had recently hit it. The sound of metal hitting concrete ran in Jim's ears, berating him to turn around. Behind them stood a man wearing what looked like red and gold knight armor. Hey Shakespeare, the man spoke up, obviously addressing to Thor. 
Please don't fire giant space lasers at the roof of my building. People will talk. Tony Stark! Thor bellowed with happiness. It's good to see you again. The armor figure removed his helmet, revealing himself to have a strikingly handsome face with black hair, a goat teeth, beautiful brown eyes, and a smirk that would make men and women alike swoon. What brings you to this neighborhood? Tony asked. And who's this? Thor, don't tell me you're keeping a boy toy now. That's just not kosher. This is Jim, kin of hawks, Thor stated. He is a friend of mine from another world. He was wondering if you could help him repair his robotic friend. Tony gaze moved over to Jim. Immediately, Jim's knees began to feel weak. He wasn't sure if it was the motion sickness coming back, or if it was Tony's eyes meeting his. Jim decided to make things easier on his mind by accepting the former. Let me guess, your last name is Hawkins, Tony asked. Jim nodded. Tony nodded back in response. I thought so, Tony said. Goldilocks here doesn't really grasp the concept of last names. Anyways, why don't you guys step inside? Tony entered into a large mechanical ring that quickly removed his armor. Jim could hardly avert his eyes from the incredible device. And if watching the strange device give him an excuse to hold his gaze on Tony's body under the armor, then all the better. Tony then let Thor and Jim down into his apartment. It was a large apartment, taking up the entire top floor of the skyscraper, which Tony apparently owned the entirety of. It looked brand new. It had been decorated to look very modern, and Jim found the entire room to feel very relaxing. You like the new decor? Tony asked, his question aimed at Thor. I had to do a little remodeling after your brother trashed the place. Yes, Thor said heavily. I see that your New York is making progress in reconstruction as well. Yep, Tony said as he poured himself a glass of scotch over at the mini bar. Stark Industries is funding most of the construction efforts. It's a big mess, but I've got it covered. You guys want a drink? Thor and Jim both shook their heads. Tony only struck and walked back over to them. The glass of scotch rested firmly in his hands. So, how's your crazy brother's trial going? Tony asked. Any progress? Jim noticed that Tony was apparently much less considerate about bringing up Loki around Thor. He didn't really seem too concerned with the blond man's feelings. None, Thor said blankly. Odin is conflicted. Nepotism at its finest, Tony stated. Thor was about to respond when a voice not attached to any bodied echo throughout the room. Sir, it said. Yes, Jarvis, Tony asked. It would seem that Red Ghost and the Super Apes are robbing a bank in the Upper East Side. Tell the local authorities that Iron Man and Thor are on the way, Tony instructed before turning back to Thor. Ready for a little sequel to our last battle? I certainly hope this one causes less property damages, Thor chuckled. No promises, Tony laughed back. Hey kid, you can chill out here while we're gone. Just don't touch anything. But I, we shall not be long, Thor assured him. Jim wanted to argue further. But the two men ran out quickly, like excited children on Christmas morning. Great. Sidelined already. So, that was the second chapter of GA Villains Chasing a Dream. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'm out.